Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Time. I'm your host Thomas, filming live on location once again for another installment of the Napa Valley Sub Appalachian Series. And today I'm happy to be up on uh, what is one of my favorite Appalachians here in Napa Valley called Howl Mountain. And Howl Mountain was my home for about a year. I lived up here and was the director of hospitality for a couple wineries up here and really enjoyed the beauty and the peaceful environment of Howl Mountain. It's a gorgeous place. Um, the whole Appalachian is about 14,000 acres, but the majority of that's forest land. About 1,500 acres are planted to vine, uh, very small family-owned wineries. There's about uh, 47 wineries up here and about 38 other growers. Um, some of the most world-class Cabernet producers in all of Napa Valley are up here on Howl Mountain. And it's a really lovely place to come up here and, and plan a day, uh, visit a few wineries, and really catch the essence of what's going on on Howl. Now, Howl Mountain was one of the very first sub-Appalachians of Napa Valley. It was declared a Appalachian in 1983, about four months after the very first sub-Appalachian was declared over in Carneros. They, they established Howl Mountain. And Howl Mountain is very unique. Um, to be part of this Appalachian, you, mean, you must be up on Howl Mountain, uh, which... Um, is in the northern section of Napa Valley, the northeastern part of Napa Valley, kind of right above the town of St. Helena. And you must be at least 1,400 feet above sea level. Now that's where kind of the first vineyards are planted on Howell, and it goes all the way up to about 2,500 feet in elevation. Now that plays a significant role in uh, the life of the vine and what the vines go through here on the mountain. Howell Mountain is unique in the fact that the Cabernet Sauvignon that grows up here really struggles for life. Um, the soils up here are this gorgeous red, ironous, very well-drained volcanic soil. Also a little bit of um, uh, compressed ash, which we call tufa. And the soil doesn't retain much moisture at all and uh, lacks the nutrients uh, essential for, for a really fertile crop. So um, Cabernet struggles and it produces a really small crop load. Uh, meaning that if you are a winery up here planting a Cabernet vineyard, you might crop about two tons per acre, uh, maybe even less in some of the rockier spots. And so the vine produces a very small amount of fruit. The berries are really small and compact. Uh, the skins are really thick up here. And so when you harvest all your fruit, you get a very low yield, uh, but you're getting a ton of skins in those tanks and a very small amount of juice, producing wines of intensity and color and tannin and flavor intensity. Uh, the Cabernets growing on Howl Mountain are some of the most unique and beautiful wines and age-worthy wines in all of Napa Valley. Um, it's a uh, very much a Appalachian that uh, has a different temperature, meaning that it's very cool at night up on Howl Mountain, anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees cooler, uh, making the, the Cabernet berries have a nice brisk acidity in it. Um, but also in the late summer here, Howl Mountain is unique in the fact that the marine layer in the fog covers the Napa Valley floor above or underneath 1400 feet. And the valley floor is nice and cool in the mornings and doesn't receive much sunshine. While up here on Howl Mountain in the morning, uh, above the fog layer, it's getting all that extra two, three, even sometimes four hours of intensity of sun. And it's about 10 degrees warmer in the late summer up on Howl Mountain. Uh, so while the, the bud break and the, uh, the season starts a little bit later uh, in the springtime, um, the harvest ends up catching up and Howell Mountain usually harvests their grapes about a week to a week and a half after the valley floor. So almost the same, uh, almost the same harvest period up on Howell Mountain because it catches up with all those extra morning, morning sunshine hours. Um, it's a, it's a great place, though there are some fantastic wineries up here. I would recommend um, going to Cade Winery, where I'm kind of sitting in their vineyard right now. Uh, they have a property called Cade 13th, which is really historic. It's the 13th bonded winery in uh, California history, so it's a very old, old winery. Brick, brick winery with big cave system underneath it, really cool spot to go. But beyond that, there is Dunn Vineyards, one of the real classic Napa Valley uh, Howell Mountain producers, Dunn. Uh, Robert Craig, the highest elevation vineyard, uh, uh, the highest elevation winery at 2,300 uh, feet up. Um, O'Shaughnessy, excellent producer of wine. Chimarosa, um, Outpost, 
some fantastic wines at Outpost produced by the great winemaker Thomas Rivers Brown. Black Sears, which is one of my favorite Zinfandel uh, producers up here on Howe Mountain. They make an old vine Zinfandel that's absolutely one of the best. Uh, Robert Foley Vineyards, little tiny vineyard that I was the director of hospitality at called Bravante, really neat place. Arkenstone is another one. Um, Oh, it's another great property, Adamus, which produces uh, scintillating, expensive wines produced uh, and made by Philippe Melka. Just fabulous wineries up here. If you're gonna come up for the day, realize that Hal Mountain is largely owned by the Adventist uh, church community. And uh, part of that means that they don't have a lot of restaurants here at all. In fact, the only thing that you can really eat up here is at their little deli at their grocery store. And um, so if you're gonna come up to Howe Mountain, make sure you definitely call ahead uh, to the wineries that you're gonna visit, see if they have any accommodations for food up here or if you can bring a sack lunch um, because the closest thing that would be uh, to getting yourself a lunch if you come up to Howe Mountain for the day would be to drive all the way back down to St. Helena and then drive back all the way up the mountain. So make sure you plan ahead in terms of food, but definitely come up here, book a full day on Howe Mountain, do two, three, four wineries up here and uh, catch the essence. The wines are age-worthy, they're powerful, they're dense wines that require some aging, uh, but they're a combination of red fruits and dark fruits and this beautiful acidity that underlines every, every uh, bit of that richness and intensity. Um, also, I would say a, co a combination of red fruits, dark fruits in the wines, but also a underlining almost mineral quality and uh, kind of an earthy tone to the wine with a little bit of dried herb and like the sage component. Uh, fabulous, fabulous Cabernets, guys. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me here at the channel and for subscribing and liking the videos and supporting me. Um, stay tuned for more episodes of this and uh, as we wrap up the sub-Appalachian series and move into other content as well. Thanks, guys. Cheers.